So it's all common preparation. What is required is common because data interpretation is nothing but math. Mainly percentages and averages. So that's anyway part of arithmetic in your classification. So now what is AB equal to C, right? One and all the sessions will will revolve around. Okay, my background I forgot to tell you, right? I've taken CAT two times, score hundred percentile two times. I can take it again, I can take it again, I can score hundred percentile again. Because the methods which I use are very different. And that's exactly what I'm going to give it to you. So 2003 and 2005, I've taken CAT two times, got into all the IMs. First time I attended six interviews, cleared all six. Second time I attended only ABC, got into all three. I was, do, I was able to do all these things because I never wanted it. That's, that's the biggest thing. Now whether how, because your, all the other sections you can perform well under pressure, but not in an aptitude test. An aptitude test, you will perform better only if you can think. And if you want to think, you should take it casually. And how you can start taking it casually is one more question to be answered. That you taking it casually will come from confidence, will come from the type of question. If you are ready to expect any kind of questions which anyone can even think of, that's when you will start taking it. You will start enjoying. You should, this, is, this is one preparation which you will start liking it. It's not like any other exam, right? We are talking about common sense and reasoning. And uh, this part of it is something which you like preparing for. So. What, and all sessions there will be something common. Now what is common here is rather than trying to force or trying asking you to memorize everything through formulae and what people call shortcuts. So nothing is based on, I'm not even going to give you any shortcut. There is no shortcut as such. It's, it's just about I'll make you think better. I'll ask, I'll make you ask questions. Not to me, I'll make you ask questions to yourself. And that learning how to ask the right questions or expecting is what you'll gain, gain from this particular class. So rather than memorizing everything through variables, I'll ask you to uh, understand or uh, express the same concept in numbers. Some of you will do it better in numbers. Some of you are good with numbers. Some of you are good with words. So some of you can express them in words. And uh, most of us are, most of us find this very easy when you see concepts in diagrams, when you visualize concepts. So this is what I'll keep it as a standard thing across, across all sections because the sections which I mentioned before, this is algebra, this is algebra, this is geometry, this is arithmetic, this is numbers. So there's nothing else left out. These are the only four ways you will get a question for sure in quantitative aptitude. These are the only four ways you can get a question. These are the only four ways you can get an option. So what you, this is what we need to learn, how to convert one format to the other format. How to convert one format to the other format. So now, so let me start off with the most, imp what you think is the most important in terms of time required, but you will now soon realize that it's not worth preparing for, very soon. It's not worth spending that much time if it's about sweet distance time and time and work. In seventh standard, I agree. It's maybe we need to spend a lot of time understanding even a word like speed, distance, time and all, but not now. It's not at our level, it's way below our level. Speed, distance, time, all of us know the meaning of speed, distance and time. All of us know that more the speed is less the time taken. So it's whether you prepare for it or not, it's just about whether you, whether you are able to think when you read the question, whether you are able to expect questions. So now what is speed distance time? Speed, I can replace A by speed and time by dis B, speed into time is distance. So speed distance time is just an example for AB equal to C. You can see variables here, you can see words here, variables, words. So questions on speed distance time, most of the times will be given in words. Answers will be given in numbers. See these four things you need to keep in mind because this is, a, this is the only thing which I'll show you how to do it, converting one to the other, to the other. So questions can be given in words if it's, it, because it might be written speed and time and distance and some scenarios based on that. Now they might use some cars and buses and trains and boats and streams and escalators and more, anything because we all understand the meaning of these words, right? These are things which we can relate to. So speed into time is distance. Now mathematically if you want to write, just to make it look like a math class, I will tell that A inversely proportional to B is where C constant. Where C is constant, A is inversely proportional to B. That's the meaning of AB equal to C. Logically if you think about it, it's as easy as more of A, it's less of B. So you can note down more of A, it's less of B. That is AB equal to C. Right? More of A if it's less of B, take it as AB equal to C. So this session is on speed distance time because you need to know, right, what are the topics which you, when you see the other books and other institute materials, if I'm sure you should not go through them or I don't need to tell that you will stop doing that very soon. So more of A if it's less of B that is AB equal to C. 
Now, say may be equal to C. You think of all the scenarios which you can write in words. And that might be your questions. That might be your chapters in your books. And uh, in numbers, you can say AB equal to C is 1 by 2 increase will result in 1 by 3 decrease. So it's much more basic when it comes to numbers. Half the increase is one third the decrease if AB is equal to C. This is AB equal to C in numbers, your third language. Variables, words, numbers. So now why is it? No, there's, if you should not just memorize 1 by 2 equal to 1 by 3. 1 by 2 increase will result in 1 by 3 decrease. You should always ask the question, why? Now that why is easy to explain. I'll just show that using numbers. 4 into 6 is 24. You can note this down. And I'll ask you what to note down. Minimum things to be noted down. Because I told you, right, there's nothing much which you need to go back and practice or memorize. 4 into 6 is 24. If I'm not changing 24, that is, assume that 24 is kept as a constant. Now what is 4 into 6 is 24? It's an example for AB equal to C. It's a specific case of AB equal to C. Now when do we use, spe when we use specific cases, that's when we'll end up using numbers. When we are generalizing something, that is when we use, end up using variables. When we are writing scenarios, that is when we end up using words. And there are a lot of places where you can visualize also. Right? Now, in this session, uh, nothing much to visualize because that you will see in main, mainly in geometry and related areas. 4 if it's in becoming 6. Now what is the increase here? 4 becoming 6 is there is an increase of 2. There is an increase of 2 on top of 4. So 2 by 4 increase. There's a, this is a pattern here, right? 2 by 4 increase. 6 will become 4, right? If, the, if 24 is not changing. So 6 becoming 4, what is the decrease here? There is a decrease of 2, right? 6 to 4, there is a decrease of 2 on top of 6. So this is what I was writing as 2 by 4 is 1 by 2. 1 by 2 increase will result in 1 by 3 decrease. So that's AB equal to C in numbers. We are almost finishing with AB equal to C. Now what is that remaining if you ask me? We'll look at all the scenarios which normally people use while making questions. What people write as chapters because even the guys who are making your sheet, your exam paper, they depend on all these books and what is available. So we need to make sure that we are expecting that. Otherwise AB equal to C is over. AB equal to C is already over. AB equal to C is 1 by 2 increase resulting in 1 by 3 decrease. 1 by 2 increase will result in 1 by 3 decrease provided the two are inversely proportional. That is more of A if it's less of B. So any scenario where more of A if it's less of B, now how will you understand that? that that's any, for that you don't need preparation. You, because that's what you will, if you just relate to what is happening around us, you will get the answer for that. If you use a better worker, will you finish the work faster? Yes. That is, if more the efficiency is less the time taken. If you use a better worker, he will finish the work faster. So they are in, that is why efficiency is inversely proportional to time. Provided work or the project is kept as a constant. That's your next chapter, right? These are different chapters in your books. But you just told me as your the most popular book. So that is why there's a big advantage. That's the most popular book. That is what 90% of the guys will be using it. The moment you stop using it, you have an advantage. And a huge advantage.